So, obviously, a lot of people like to hear Wayne talk about, you know, playing the trumpet, playing high, playing lead. Um, there's actually a good amount of information like that already, like I referenced earlier, already on, on YouTube. In fact, um, you did a thing for Yamaha Europe for just a new project. Yeah, just, la just last year, yeah. Where you talk about playing. Yeah, it was all about playing. And they, they we did one long interview on the deck of uh, the USS Rotterdam, which is kind of interesting. It's a hotel now, kind of like the Queen Mary in, in Long Beach. Right, right. That And that ship, I worked on in the 80s. I worked on that ship. And so it was my hotel. It was just so bizarre to be there and going, I've walked these halls before, you know. And so we did the interview on the deck of that ship. That's really cool. Yeah. So if you want to access more of the, you know, the, the trumpet geek stuff, how to play, it's out there. And yeah. more of it's coming out soon. But if you would just touch on your philosophy about because I want to build my upper register, and you're not a fan of the word build. No, because it kind of alludes to that we need to be muscular. You know, there's a certain amount of muscle, or you can do something to make this really strong. You can play, and that's just not true because it's physics. Mm -hmm. It's a read and airspeed and resistance, that which which makes range mm -hmm. and tongue level and all those things that kind of go together, go hand in hand. But to think just because you have a strong embouchure or you're going to build something, I mean, you can practice something. I mean, you know, my opinion, you can practice something over and over and over and over and get to your plateau, whatever that is, the top of your range. Nothing's going to improve. You're going to get better and better at playing that. That range is not going to go up until something changes. Mm -hmm. Something physically changes. Right. A direction of the air, a shift in pressure, any of those things. And I'm an example of that because I was, I, my range is the same now as it was when I was 12. It, it literally is. Mm -hmm. I might have no more notes now. I could play double high C when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't, you know, probably sounded like somebody putting a cat in a blender, you know, but <laughs> but I could play double high C and I would pinch, press, and play and squeeze and jam the horn down my throat. But I could do it. I had no embouchure strength. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't practicing. I didn't do any range exercises or range building things. I just happen to have the air going through the mouthpiece the right way. Mm -hmm. The drummer in my high school band, and I've used this example on, on several videos, but the drummer, my, the drummer in my high school band, this guy named Ron Crow, if Ron watches this, <laughs> um, was a great drummer, and we were two peas in a pod in high school. He was a year older than me, and we'd go see Buddy Rich's band and Maynard's band together, And but he loved high note trumpet. And so he'd pick up my trumpet, and he'd put it up there, and he would just wiggle his fingers and go in like, and, and he could play up to a double high C. Well, he didn't have any embouchure strength, no training. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't do any range exercise or mouthpiece buzzing or, yeah, and we or, play, the, or <laughs> play the double high C in 37 seconds book. Right, right. You know, he didn't do any of that. It's a physics equation. If you can figure that out, um, you can discover that range. So I like to use the word discovery. So we practice to discover. And it doesn't mean that it's all trickery, but a little, a little bit of it is. And not trickery, maybe that's not the, the best thing, but it's about doing some different things. You watch many trumpet players and the stuff they do, the motions with their horn, their tilt, head tilted down when they go to this note or down or off to the side maybe a little bit, you know, all of them are through sound of all. Everybody moves around to some extent, except for Alan Mazzuti, who happens to be perfect. We hate you <laughs> for that. No, but Alan is, you know, the most perfect looking trumpet player ever. Right. And most perfect playing. He sounds, you know, that should be our example of efficiency. You know how we how we want to play, and we all kind of strive for that. And mm -hmm. he set the bar very high right, right. for that. So, but you know his changes happen inside the mouthpiece. Right. I mean, he moves a little bit, but not mm -hmm. much. Um, but the rest of us mere mortals, we 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 found that if I, I found that if I kick up my jaw a little bit when I get over high F, that that high A comes out pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, if I try to just blow it like I blow high C, and don't change anything, I can't get it. Yeah, and that so, came from just. There's no extra it strength there. Yeah. It's 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 changing the mechanism, mm -hmm. and so I had a student that could hit a, hit a high E, you know, couldn't play a note higher, and I started messing with his bell and I oh, pushed him. Yeah, you told yeah, yeah. So you have to tell the story many times. Pushed on his bell and he went to high G. Uh -huh. So he didn't it, practice high G. He didn't he just, practice high G. Just, he found it, and yeah. then was it now he knows what it feels like and what to do. Now you can develop that, and make it stronger. Right. You can develop things, mm -hmm. and that becomes easier, and then you can break through the next thing with mm -hmm. some. Some little change. Eventually, we hit the ceiling. I mean, I guess there's no limit, but you know, there should be because it sounds awful over and over. There's a lot of players that play triple high C's, but I'm like, yeah, well, great. That's like you know, that's like being the best you know, uh, kazoo player. 
was like, so that, sound would, good. that leads to my next question. How do you, you know, people think it's just about getting those notes, being yeah. able to play high, scream, whatever. Um, and there's a certain thrill factor to that that's attractive. It's like rock guitar. Right. If you think about it, a rock and roll guitarist can play all the wrongest crap you've ever heard. And we've heard them. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> they don't know that it was between a flat tire and a flat nine, but they're... Everybody's going nuts. Says, wah, 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 wah. You know, that's that's the like, high note trumpet play right. in a nutshell for for many players. So the which I hate. So the kid but, that maybe can do that and says, "Hey, I want to be in the studio. So I want to make a name for myself." <laughs> There's a very limited studio <laughs> call right, for that. For right, that kind of right. And so it's more about, you know, how do you develop a reputation, a name for yourself, so to speak that enables you to work. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, somebody asks how you make a name for yourself. But if they're asking that question first, they're putting the cartway before the horse mm -hmm. because your name comes from your quality of whatever you're doing or playing or whatever. You know, your work's going to do the talking for yeah. you. And so saying, I want to, like saying, I want to be famous. Like, you can make a name for yourself. Like I said, you know, you can run into the street naked in New York City. You're going to be in the paper. Yeah. You're going to make a name for yourself. <laughs> You're going to be forgotten very quickly. Mm -hmm. If you play really well, and bring something to the table, something special. And you're a good person, and, you know, and you're a nice person, you treat everybody well. The, that news travels fast. Mm -hmm. If you don't play well, and you're not a nice person, and you treat people poorly, word travels really fast. And in your case, if you're a great person, and you're not playing so well for whatever reason. People will help you. People will help you. People will, ac will accept you. I mean, I've had a lot of help through my career, and through my, you know, the problems I've had, people have had my back. Right. So I try to have other people's backs as well, you know, when they're in trouble. I mean, there's a couple of my colleagues now, a friend's going through some teeth, uh, trouble on his bottom teeth, and I was up in Sacramento, he lives up there, and I was working with him on that. And this guy's a great trumpet player. Mm -hmm. I can't teach him anything, mm -hmm. but he's struggling right now. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of just gave him the advice, I go, man, get your head out of the game here. Mm -hmm. Get your teeth put back, as close as you can to where they right. were before. Because you've lived through that. Yeah, I've let, he's switching mouthpiece. They go, play what you know and let this adjust, you know. And so I'm hopefully, you know, he'll, you know, he'll be okay. But he's a good guy. So I'm not, you know, of course you're going to, right. you're going to help, you help people that way. And, and I mean, it's important to be in all walks of life. There's, a, there's enough a-holes in the world, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, to be treating people poorly. And I mean, I hate that when I see it. And I see it a lot, man. Musicians can be the, some of the nicest people you'll ever meet, and also some of the worst people I've ever seen in certain situations. Right. No names. Right. But I know some very famous musicians that, there's a couple, I'm not going to mention their names, mm -hmm. but a friend of mine that was teaching at Ball State, and I did one of his last guest artist things, and you could probably figure out who that is from, but he said, there's two players that will never set foot on my canvas as long as I'm here again, and they are such and such and such and such, mm -hmm. who are mainly, and you know who these players are. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're, they didn't treat the students well. Mm -hmm. They, you know, like when you're at these kind of things, I mean, you're expected to sign autographs and kids want to meet you and they want to take your picture. And, you know, and I want to leave the legacy of of being a, I mean, I want to leave a legacy of being a, a good trumpet player, of course, but I want people to remember me like they remembered you on Racy. You on Racy was always a nice person and he helped people and his playing spoke for itself. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be remembered like that. You know, I don't, I don't want to be remembered as a high note trumpet player. I want to be remembered as somebody that could... They kept learning up to like the day I stopped playing. Right. And right. that's and I'm and I, this is how I live my life. I mean, I'm trying to uh, whenever I'm in a town or whatever I'm I'm uh, you know because I travel around and I do like this La La Land live show and I meet different trumpet players. I went to the Cleveland Orchestra and played a few years ago to play this Pixar show, mm -hmm. and Michael Sachs is there. He's undoubtedly one of the greatest first orchestral first trumpet players of our time. Right. You know, old school. Mm -hmm. He bridges the gap between the old school. Orchestral first trumpet player yeah. and today's trumpet player. I took a lesson with him, man, and he took his time. And I sucked, man. I sat there and I, uh, you know, I sound like an amateur. What you work on? What'd you, what'd you... We played a little bit out of the Arbenz book and just some. We played simple things because uh -huh. we were working on tone production, mm -hmm. and and he told me to do you know some buzzing things that I don't do. And he goes, "Well, do me a favor, humor me and do this." Uh -huh. And he put me through this little thing where I buzz my lips and I buzz a mouthpiece and I played, and then we did it through a couple of times. And then he goes, "Now play your horn again." And I played. He goes. Do you feel like your sound is more resonant? And I go, I do. He goes, well, do it. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, do it. So I kind of do this you little thing. It's in the first page of his book. Right, yeah. So do I do everything he told me to do? No, because I don't have time. But I but I took that bit of information. And I listened to him play, and I listened to his sound. And I tried to learn from that and, and internalize that. And so when I'm making a sound now, 
a big sound, I'm thinking, man, how do I make that sound mm -hmm. that he made? Right. So I, wherever I go, I'll, you know, I'll take a lesson and, you know, I've taken a lot of lessons, you know, and I'll continue to do that till the trumpet tells me it's time to, to stop playing. What do you do away from the trumpet that helps your trumpet playing? Um, it, you know, for, I, I, for many do, years, do you, take, do you take time off. Do I, I, I don't like to, because the, as you know, the trumpet, you take one day off, you lose a day, right. take two days off, you lose three days. And, uh, if you don't have to worry, like I took a vacation, we went to my wife and I went to Hawaii, uh, two years ago, 10 days. So I didn't play the first three or four days and it felt good. I was like, oh man, but you know, I didn't have any, but I did have a session the day I got back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew it was me playing some solos, and it was at Sony, and it was for the movie Sing, which uh, what I probably played a lot of stuff on that movie. So, uh, so I said I got to start practicing. So I went and found a ballroom when my wife was still sleeping. I go find a ballroom at the hotel in Maui there, and I go practice for a couple hours. And the next day, a kid came in, heard a trumpet playing. He goes, "Are you Wayne Bergeron?" <laughs> and I felt like I was going. You know, I have arrived. It's like, <laughs> or here I am in Hawaii, this kid, and he's from California. And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, I live in, you know, I forget what school he was from. And, and he goes, do you have your horn? He goes, I, I, he goes, I do. I go, I'm very proud of you. Go get your horn. Go get, oh, man. So he, I made him go get his horn. He's and his dad is a photographer. So his dad came down and singing him a trip. So I sat and I practiced with him for like three hours. And we just played stuff wow. and showed him stuff. And we hung out and took pictures. And it's was really fun and then next day I went practice he came in again and we hung out a little bit you know and so I practiced every every day after that just in the morning for a couple hours and uh and then went on with my day and didn't think about the trumpet the rest of the day and it was kind of nice but I'm glad I practiced and I'm going to tell you why because I get to this recording session and it's just me it's at Sony I'm figuring oh what's the orchestra we did some orchestra calls so I was, and I missed one of the orchestra calls because I was on vacation so when I get there there's a stack of music in front of me and it's all these solos, and they'd recorded some of them, I guess, but they wanted to redo them. So there was some high, and there was some high licks that, that needed to be played that I wasn't there for. And there was some solos and some kind of quasi-classical soaring solos. So a stack of music. You're going to play from part 268 to 300. You know, we need to get this again. It's just me, you know, butt naked in the middle of the studio. Right, right. Basically, you know, having to play this stuff. Nowhere to hide. And nowhere to hide. And if I wouldn't have practiced... I would have crashed and burned so hard because it was hard. I mean, I had to play some really comp high stuff. You know, this one lick and one of those things goes, boo -doo 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 -doo. it was a double high D. And you don't see many of those in the music, but they wanted it, you know, because they, they know I can get that note. I, I'm going to stop advertising that. <laughs> I don't, don't like doing that anymore. As I get older, I like it less, you know. So I didn't even enjoy the flugelhorn more in my, as I get older. So anyway, it's a good thing I practice. But I, I took some time off once before years ago uh, on another vacation, and I had to play when I got back, and I was so out of shape that I scuffled when I got back, and I go, I'm never taking a day off again. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now, but even through that, I came back and I was fine. So mm -hmm. now I, you, you live and learn, man. You mm -hmm. learn that you can take some time off. And taking a few days off, it can be good, especially if you're going through a chop salon. Mm -hmm. And recently I did, because I've... I've uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've lost a few pounds yes, yes, here. Yes. I'm down 30 pounds from my was a couple of few months ago. Mm -hmm. And with weight loss, as I talked about earlier with right. my weight loss problems, your chops, things change. And my body hadn't adjusted to my weight loss and my loss of mass. So I felt like I was, now, now I'm very, I was very careful about it because it would have happened to me before. So I just, you know, I haven't had to do too many really hard gigs. And now it's leveling out. So I, I, uh, I'm playing very carefully and mm -hmm. I'm warming up very carefully and I'm aware that I can't push too hard, mm -hmm. you know, because of the last mass here. And now my body's adjusting and I feel like I'm back. But I went through a little a little problem with this weight loss of putting my chops, but, but I, I know, because I've, I've done it before, right. so I wasn't panicking through it. I go, I'm gonna be okay. I just kind of realize I'm gonna be a little, mm -hmm. I could still play most things I right. had to play, but right. I'll chip in some notes and I miss a high F sharp here and there. And it's just stuff that is usually money for me. And But I get it, you know, give me another take, I got it. Yeah. And, you know, and, yeah. and, and even, the, even with that, my friends that know I'm going through this, mm -hmm. I got my back.
Hi everybody, Wayne Bergeron here, and I want to tell you from day one, I've been using Dan Gosling's Chop Saver. I've tried everything else that's on the market, all the names that you know, as well as some of the things that are made within the industry, and I keep coming back to this. If my chops are swollen or sore, I'll put this on before I go to bed, or even they just need to be moisturized. My wife likes this stuff a lot too. Uh, I highly recommend this product for, for anybody, uh, not just musicians, but anybody with chap lips or any kind of lip problem. Um, quality product and uh, I'm proud to endorse it.